All right, folks, uh, we're going to look at current electricity today. Um, our Sorry, um, I got distracted here. Um, our unit for this, this next little unit of current is very short. We're going to have our first test, our next test, um, a week from Thursday. This coming, not this Thursday, but the week after. So this is going to be less than a two-week section. So this should not take us very long to do, hopefully. Um, and today we're just going to talk about some basic circuits, some voltages of current. And we'll also get into power and power the cost of that power right um the notes that you had the notes that you download should cover everything and so keep hold of those um as we go through um a few different days of notes all right today we're just going to look at um the nature of current all right so the first thing we're going to do is look at electric circuit you did a lab yesterday in which um, you created just a really simple circuit, a really simple circuit with a switch, a battery, and a light bulb, basically, right? And all circuits consist of some sort of charge pump, and that would be the battery here, or the generator, if, if it was a different type of circuit, okay? You have to have a complete loop, which you saw in the lab, because when you disconnected one of the wires, the whole thing stopped, right? All right, and in DC circuits, um, the pump supplies electrons, and that pump is the battery. So the batteries supply the electrons that go through. That's why eventually the batteries run down because they um, run out of the chemicals that create those electrons in the reaction. Right? And then in AC circuits, the pump supplies the energy to cause vibrations, and the electrons really just go back and forth in the wire. They really don't go anywhere, they just move back and forth. That's why it's called alternating current. Right, and we get AC cert, we get AC current from outlets, things that we plug in, power plants and such. All right, so one of the things that one of the examples that people use to really explain the idea of current is comparing it to water. Right, and when you pump water through a hose or through a pipe, um, it requires a pressure difference. It requires pressure to push that water through there. Well, voltage to in a, an electric circuit is much like pressure. Voltage is what pushes the electrons through the wire. So pressure provides the push of water through the hose and voltage provides the push of the energy or the electrons through the wire. Okay. Now the current itself is like the actual flow. It's the, it's the electrons moving through the wire, right? So the flow is the flow of water through the hose or the flow of the electrons through the wire. All right, voltages, when we talk about batteries, most most type of batteries that you're familiar with are those cylinder batteries, um, AA, AAA, C batteries, D batteries. They're all 1.5 volts. The difference is, is that like a D battery contain, is bigger, so it contains more chemicals, so it lasts longer. Right, um, another, other types of batteries you might be familiar with, car batteries are typically 12 volts. Um, there are 9 volt batteries, the little block ones, a um, bunch of different types. Okay, and then what comes out of the wall is AC, and that's always at 120 volts. All right, so now we're going to talk about current, all right? Um, when we calculate current, current is represented by the letter I. Why they chose the letter I, don't know. C was taken, I guess, all right? But I is current, Q, let's see, current. Q is charge, and T is time. So current is just a charge per time. How many coulombs per second of charge moves through? The unit is in coulombs per second, C over S, and they give it a new name called the Ampere, named after a French, another French physicist called Andre Ampere. But you're probably more familiar with it being called amps, right? And usually we just abbreviate it with the letter A. Okay. We measure current in a, in a circuit using an ammeter, right, which you did in the lab um, yesterday. The little, you didn't actually use an ammeter, but you took a little thing that represented the ammeter, put it in the circuit, and it measured the current. So if a wire carries 10 amps, that means there's 10 coulombs of charge passed by every second. And 10 coulombs is a lot of charge. In fact, that turns out to be 
that number, 6.25 times 10 to the 19th electrons every second. And that's what it's written out. And to get that, just to remind you, because you may have to do this on a problem later on, is remember we say that um, Q total is the number of electrons times the charge of an electron. The 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So we just take 10 coulombs and divide by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 to get that number of electrons. So that's a lot of electrons. Right, you might need to be able to do that for part one of the problems on our in our practice sheet that you're going to do today. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. Current in a light bulb is 0.835 amps. How much charge passes through a point in five seconds? So we start with I is equal to Q divided by T, and we're going to solve for Q. So the current is 0.835, and that's equal to Q divided by five. And so now we just multiply. 5 times, multiply both sides by 5, and we get Q is equal to 4.175 coulombs. So that's a lot of charge. 4 coulombs is what you get when you're struck by lightning like 4 different times. So that's a lot of charge. Alright, so a lot of times it's easier to start with just Q equals I times T. Um, we don't really that doesn't tell us quite as much, but it becomes handy, particularly in the second problem. All right, here's the second one. If a current in a wire of a CD player is 5 milliamps, so we're going to have to convert that milliamps to amps at some point, how long would it take for a 2 coulomb charge to pass a point in this wire? All right, so again, I is Q over T, and this time we're solving for T. So let's Rearrange the equation first. Let's get Q is equal to I times T. We multiply both sides by T. All right, and we can start with that, and then we'll solve for T. It'll make our life a lot easier. All right, so Q is 2. I is 5 milliamps, but let's figure out what 5 milliamps is, right? 5 milliamps. We're going to have to convert that, so we're going to 5.0. All right, but we're going to actually let me move that. Let's do that again. Five milliamps, five point oh oh. But we have to move when we go from bigger to smaller, which milliamps is small. We have to go back to the left. So one, two, three. The decimal place goes here. Zero, zero. So it's zero point zero zero five times t. And we divide both sides by 0 0.005. And we get our, our uh, time to be 400 seconds. And that is our answer. All right, so those are the types of problems that you'll have to do. They're not super hard, um, just a little bit of practice. And just real quick, um what the effects of you know when, if you get sh um shocked by this type of current what can happen okay 0 0.001 amps that's one milliamp can be felt you can feel it you feel a little bit of a shock a little bit of a tingle five milliamps or 0 0.05 amps is, can be very painful double that to 10 milliamps or 0 0.01 you start getting involuntary muscle contractions right um, at 15 milliamps, you get a loss of muscle control. And when you get up to about 70 milliamps is when things can get really dangerous. Your heart will go into fibrillation and start wildly beating out of control. And that can really cause, um, that can cause death. So you have to, um, you know, avoid that at all costs. All right. So what I want you all to do from here is work on your practice problems. There's five of them. You're only going to do the the current problems, we'll do the Ohm's Law problems tomorrow. Um, there's four or five of them, won't be hard for you to do, just practice them, make sure you're comfortable with them. Um, I'll take questions on them at the beginning of class tomorrow. We're meeting as a class at the beginning um, tomorrow to see if there's any questions about these. We might work through one as a group. And then, uh, um, then you're gonna take notes tomorrow on Ohm's Law. 
okay, which is one of the biggies that we're going to be using in this section. Okay, and remember that Thursday also there is a lab check, so make sure that lab is completed by Thursday. And we're going to have a learning check over all of this stuff, most likely on Friday. All right, so finish up those problems and have a great day.